right, all right, all right, all right, all right, guys. What's going on, world? It's your boy, Larry Wills. We are back with another NBL Business Podcast. All right, so today is going to be a very special episode, okay? I'm going to be talking to you about how to actually launch a company into profit without failing the first time, okay? And because a lot of people, entrepreneurs, startup entrepreneurs, ambitious entrepreneurs who are feeling underpaid, right? It's a lot of us who have these wonderful ideas and wonderful, you know, things in our head that we know that will help people, but we have no clue on how to get it out to the marketplace so that it actually becomes profitable and it becomes a million dollar brand. Does this make sense? All right, so I'm going to be explain it to you the way the, the, the simplest way to launch anything uh, let alone let it make a lot of money okay all right so and i'm going to be doing that i'm going to be I'm, I'm sorry i'm going to be demonstrating this process through and through my program mbl business because I, I build as i grow i do everything as we go along and i'm very transparent so i explain all of the steps that it takes in order to get it out there and i don't leave the little things out like you see when people give you a high level overview, you know, we go into depth in this podcast because I want people to really understand how a billion dollar or million dollar unicorn is actually born from scratch. OK, and so if you've been listening up to this point in our previous episodes, you've seen us from start to finish. Right. Or up until this point, create everything that we built inside. All right. And so we started at zero dollars. We started at zero program. We started at zero systems and we started at zero everything. And today we're up to over $170,000 accumulated, okay? And that's both through marketing at both, I'm sorry, both through collecting marketing dollars from our beta members, as well as system fees, product upgrades, backend upsells, and things of that nature. And that's the money that actually keeps the program going until we actually get to launch, until we get actually out into the marketplace. Does this make sense, guys? Okay, you can't be dipping into your profit and spending. You can't be dipping into the money that you're going to need in order to launch your million dollar brand. Right. So all that money that you accumulate through your beta mode, keep that money so that when it's time to launch, there's no reservations. Make sense. All right. So how do we do it? All right. What's going on at this point? So at this point, right up until now, <clears throat> we were talking about <clears throat> and I'm sorry, we were talking about how to build the company. Right from the inside out. So if you don't know how to build a company, you don't understand what we did to do so and how we bring it, what we're actually building with our program and how we bring it to life without unlimited cash flow process that you can that anyone can implement without selling anything. Um, then you want to listen to the previous episodes. But in this episode today, okay, let me tell you how it all began before we actually got up over the hundred thousand dollar mark. And so <clears throat> the first thing that you want to do, you have to understand there's a term that Dan Kennedy used inside of his no BS um, book series. And that term is market to message match. Okay, that's market to message match, right? And what does that mean? That means that your market, I'm sorry, that your message must match the market or else you, nothing's gonna happen, all right? And so why is that important? <clears throat> well, to give you some insight, when we created the beta program, right, we had a bunch of members and from the top, level of the market pyramid all right so if you pour if you if you draw a triangle on a piece of paper you got the pointy side up top you got the you know the flat side down the bottom 10 percent of the top that little triangle at the top 10 percent of that point right so if you take 10 percent start from the point and then come down 10 percent that represents the part of the market that we call hyperactive okay so that's your hyperactive buyers your hyperactive leads your hyperactive your hyperactive action takers. It's everyone that will be hyperactive into understanding what's going on, all right? And now, and also in the market, you have levels of sophistication. And so when you think about that, that market pyramid, that top 10%, that's the hyperactive phase, right? That's the hyperactive market. We have a good um, diaphragm of this on the inside. But that's the hyperactive phase, right? The rest of the pyramid, the rest of the little triangle, right? So from 10% on down to 0%, right? 
is each is 90% left over. So you got 30%, 30%, 30%, all right? And so the market is different ways to talk to each part of the market so that you can build each part of your program as you grow, all right? And so when we started out building the unlimited cash flow process, um, I know, you know, the problem in the market is cash flow. That's just a given. But will they hear that? Will they hear the message just talking about correct your cash flow? Nine times out of ten, wouldn't no one hear that because we don't believe we have a cash flow problem. We believe we have a process problem. But we believe we have all of these other things that just aren't adding up or we're confused and we're unclear and we don't understand what type of problem we have. All right. And so the first thing that we needed to do was build the beta program. And by talking market to message match, right? This the reason I'm telling you guys this is because this secret that I'm gonna give you guys, this this little insight, pay attention. Because if you get this part right, you will never not be able to make a sale. Never. Not in a million years, right? So you can always be able to produce profit when you need it at will instantly because you understand the process okay and so when it comes to the market the message match dealing when building your first initial program i go from zero to 100k right the first thing that you have to understand is what creates cash flow when you try to build a passive income stream okay the, the thing that creates cash flow when you're trying to build a passive income stream when you're just getting started in your business is solving problems okay a, a problem and solution, right? If you think about your life, it's full of problems and solutions. That's human nature. That's in all of us, okay? So when you think about exchanging cash flow, if you have a problem and I have the solution, then we exchange money. So if your toilet is broke and the plumber has the solution and you change money, exchange money, then your toilet gets fixed. That means that the plumber solved your problem, right? <laughs> okay, <clears throat> right? And so when you think about problem solutions, so the fastest path to cash is to come up with a problem that's going to solve, I'm sorry, come up with a solution that's going to solve a problem. Does that make sense, guys? All right, and so when you're thinking about that in such a way, you're, you want to elicit. So when you're building your, when you, when every time you go to talk to the marketplace, no matter which, no matter which level of sophistication in the market you're talking to, and it's, it's five levels of sophistication. I'm going to be breaking down a couple of those levels through this so that you guys can see the power in it. All right. Words are the most powerful force in the universe. So when you use your words to send a message to a marketplace and that, and those words elicit an emotional response, then you're going to cause movement to shift in the marketplace. OK, now that movement can go in two directions. It can shift towards you. OK, and it or it can shift away from you. And, and it all depends on the type of words that you use that allows who's ever reading those words, listening to those words or, you know, observe, uh, um, consuming those words. They're either going to move towards you or they're going to move away from you. OK, so and we normally try to make our podcast 15 minutes long. But this is a special episode because I'm going to break down some really cool things for you guys in this episode. And uh, and that's where you actually get it. But so what happens is that I'm going to give you an example, a really practical example to show you how you elicit an emotional response. All right. So if I so if, and this is how you get really targeted as well. Remember, when you come to the market, you want to be solving a problem for a specific person. Right. So which which means that when this person <laughs> sees the problem. They understand that they're, that's the problem. They can actually see it. They can actually read it. And if you don't do that, then they're not going to, it's not going to ensue clarity. They're going to be confused and they're going to walk away. That's how you can, you know, make people move away from you, right? But if you have clarity, it's going to make people see the message. If the clarity is speaking to their specific problem, it's going to make them elicit, I mean, um, it's going to make it elicit an emotional response and they're going to act. OK, they're going to act. And so to bring this down to a practical example, your target must be pinpoint. So if I'm speaking to a room full of women. Right. And I'm going to show you the difference, guys. If I'm speaking to a room full of women and I had, and it's just a regular woman in there. Right. No, everyone's just normal, normal. There's nothing going on in their lives. They don't have any new life events going on. They're not married. They're not. They're just, they're just in the room, right? A room full of women. Some married, some may be divorced, some may be single. So you got a room full of women mixed up in all different categories, okay? Some may be old, some may be young, okay? So whatever the case may be. 
and I have a product that says how to raise your baby IQ before it's born. How to raise your baby IQ before it's born, okay? In a room full of women, that would be an intriguing product. But do anyone have that problem? We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. It could be some pregnant women in the room. It could may not be. There. It could be some expected mothers in the room. Or maybe some ones that's planning a baby. Maybe some ones that already had kids. It could be all types of people in the room. But does that elicit an emotional response? It could. It couldn't. But how do you pinpoint it? How do you get it to like the specific situation? All right. You change the words, and you make the product fit a specific person. So with that, so if I change the words just slightly and I change the audience just a little bit, right? So instead of it just being a room full of women, let's put a room full of women that's already that's pregnant and they already have a two-year-old. Now you see how specific you can get, right? And you take that same thing, and this is one of my easier ex, easier ways to explain this, so that you guys get it. And you take that same message and you just add a, add on a little bit to it. Right. And the message now becomes to that same to the to, to the pinpointed audience. Right. How to make how to raise your baby IQ before it's born so they can skip the terrible twos. <laughs> right. Now, can you imagine the different emotional response that that room will have if that target audience is pinpoint and then that message match the, the audience? Right. Now, if I was selling that product and I really had that audience, how many people you think will actually take action? Almost half the, half the room, if not all. Right. And so this is the type of emotion that you want to elicit to the marketplace when you're actually out there talking to the market about the problem that you solve and the solution you bring to the table. If it's not pinpointed to specifically who you need to be talking to, then it's not going to elicit that emotional response, which is going to either a make them come or make them go away but we have no way of measuring and tracking that because we're not specific enough does that make sense guys okay and so that's one of the things that we had to make sure that we did before we started the beta program okay and now when you bring the beta program and you're talking to that top 10 percent nine times out of ten you're talking to a direct client about a specific problem and a result that he wants to have and that client because you're talking to the top percent they're already active hyperactive Right. So they become hyperactive leads, hyperactive buyers, hyperactive clients, and then hyperactive implementers because you're going through the process as you grow. Makes sense. OK. And so this because they really want the solution. And those are the people that you want to be working with at the beginning of anything you launch into the marketplace. Now, when you guys have built the system, you know, fixed all of your processes, you got your value embedded in your price points. You got your premium products in, in, in place. You got everything that it takes in order to bring a program to life. Now you need to do a, a few things. OK, the first thing that you need to do is now you need to speak to the second level of the market, that second level of sophistication. All right. There's five in total. So if the, so and let me break down these levels of sophistication. We're not going to break down all of them because we don't have enough time. But I do want to give you guys some insight on the levels of sophistication that you can Think about before you actually put your marketing messages out there. OK, and so the, the top of the market, those are people who are problem aware. They're problem. I'm sorry, they're product aware. I'm sorry, they're problem aware, which means, hey, I know I have the problem. OK. They're solution aware, which means I have this problem and there's a solution that exists. OK. And then they are also product aware, which means I have this problem. There's a solution that exists. I just have to find the right product because there's already products out there to solve the problem. So that's the first person you're going to be talking to in a marketplace. And if you build your beta program around that type of targeting, talking to those type of people, then nine times out of ten, you're going to elicit an emotional response. OK, and we give you a full train of this inside of our MBL Business Academy. Well, actually, inside of our MBL Passive Income System. Right. And so with that being said, when it's time to go to the market and it's time to launch your program, you can't go to the market and launch the program to that small 10 percent of act hyperactives because you're not talking to enough of the marketplace. So you have to change your messages up to fit the public. Right. And so now you have to become more specific, more specific in your message, more specific in your processes, more specific into actually who you're trying to serve. So that when you go out to oh, when you go out there to the other 90 percent of the marketplace, they actually can hear your message and then actually see it. All right. If you're doing anything besides that, 
then you're spinning your wheels, no one's responding, and everybody's have no clue on what part of the market or what sophisticated level that my audience is at while they're listening to me trying to explain solutions and problems. Right? You gotta have you have to have those things lined up. Okay, and I don't care if you join the company, if you sell your own digital products, if you are, you know, an actual physical product business person, if you have a brick and mortar, if you're in a service industry like real estate, plumbing, things like that, contracting, if you're, uh, you know, a, a specialist like a, a chiropractor or a brain surgeon, it doesn't really make a difference, guys. You all solve specific problems or multiple problems for your clients. Pick one. Go to the market with that problem. Bring in that tribe of people. Pick another one. Go to the market with that problem. Talking to the people who has that, who needs that solution. Bring in those tribe of people. And that's how you get your initial profit rolling in. Okay? After you get initial profit rolling in, that money, you use that money to build out everything else. So when we got our initial profit rolling in, then we built our Oracle platform. Right? This is our encrypted platform where we keep our community of inner circle members. Right. Then we built our uh, our actual processes and our programs and our systems and our everything that we're going to use, the membership sites and the areas and all of these things. Right. So that when our members come in, they can see the clean flow of the process and every step to take. OK, we tested these processes with our beta, beta members. And so if the beta member can complete the process without us speaking to him. Right. That means that it's automated and he got the result 100 percent without no one's involvement. That's an amazing situation. And so we tested those things. We validated the results. And then at the end of everything and everything was finalized, we said, okay, cool. Now I got to change my marketing messages to fit the market, right? Because we're not talking to the general market of overall. We're talking to ambitious entrepreneurs who feel that they are underpaid and have been doing a lot of stuff and still confused. This makes sense, guys. Okay. And so... By us changing that messaging up and getting prepared and ready for the launch, we're now ready for the launch. And that's the first part that you need to put in place before you actually launch the market. OK, the second part is the marketing and sophistication. All right. So the first level of sophistication in the market, which is one that we just used an example on person has problem solution. I'm sorry, a person <laughs> that's that's aware that he has a problem, understand that the solutions exist, exist, but don't understand um, how to find a product. Okay, you know there's a product out there, but he needs to still pinpoint it. All right. And if you can pin, if your mark if your message speaks to that and your product represents the transformation that they're needing, you're gonna elicit that emotional response because they desperately want to solve that problem. And that's with every person in the marketplace, right? That that understands that that's that understand this problem, understand there's a product that exists, and understand that um, there's a solution to it. Okay. The second, the, the, the fifth stage of the market, okay, just so you guys can get some awareness. The fifth stage of the market is a, per, is a total opposite person. He has the problem, all right? So he has the problem. He doesn't understand that it's a problem, though, <laughs> okay? Which means he's not trying to solve a problem, so he's not really looking for a solution. And if he's not really looking for a solution, that means that he's never bought any products and he doesn't even, he's not even aware that a product, a, problem, a product may exist to solve that problem. And so he's a totally unaware client, a totally unaware person in the market when it comes to sophistication. And so if your message is out there trying to solve this problem with a great solution and, you talk to, and you're not talking to anyone and that message come across that person who, who does have the problem and you see that clearly that he has the problem, he's not going to see it because he's not aware. So instead of talking to that part of the market, won't you talk to the second part of the market? Because your beta program is built. You have made $100,000. You got testimonies. You got results. So now you need to go to the second level of sophistication. And that second level of, of sophistication is A, they understand that the problem exists. B, they understand that it's a solution to the problem. But C, they don't know or have a clue that the product exists that delivers the solution. So they know these two things exist, right? And we're going to take our problem, for example. Our problem that we help entrepreneurs solve is a cash flow problem, right? How to turn, well, you, you, it's a cash flow problem. All entrepreneurs have a cash flow problem um, if you're working for your income, which means, which means that if you stop, it stop, all right? And so if you had this problem, a cash flow problem, you done tried everything in the marketplace to solve this problem. So you know it's a solution that exists because you see people out in the marketplace that don't have that problem. 
So you know it's a solution that exists. And so you buy stunt home study courses, you buy different types of programs, you see different types of financial planners, you may do all types of extensive stuff, and you still have a cash flow problem, all right? And so if I come to the marketplace explaining that problem, showing the solution that is missing because you're aware of it and you, and you, you just don't, uh, there has been no solution that elicits an emotional response, Right? And I come to the marketplace with that solution that elicits that emotional response. Now, not only did the top part of the market take action because it's a more direct, right? But the second sophisticated level of the market, that second stage of the market sophistication. Now we can launch to that stage because that audience is a wider cast. It's a wider cast. And I'm going to try to give you a practical example on that, right? So let's say, for instance, helps... Um, And it's going to be a really good example that everybody can relate to. Let's say that, for instance, you have a dog and your dog barks all the time. He barks when someone knocks on the door. He barks if someone walks through the grass. (laughs) Right. He just bark, 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 bark. He barks when he had the kids playing in the backyard. He barks, bark, 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 bark. Okay. And if you own a dog. Right. And I've had a a dachshund. I've had a (laughs) uh, my fiance. She's had a. uh, a, a, a Pomeranian, right? So we're we're famous. We're we're <laughs> like fans of the barking dog, okay? And so if you have these two issues, and we're out here and we're looking for these problems and these products that exist, right? So we can solve that problem. And so we we are problem aware. We have a barking dog, a, a barking dog, and we look. We need a solution for it, and we know that there's products that exist on the. I mean, we know that there's solutions that exist in the marketplace because there's dog trainers. They'll come pick your dog up and train them and stop barking. Right? There's home study programs you can buy and and try to make your dog stop barking. Right? Does any of those things work? Okay. And so we came across a product that explained our problem. Right. Better than anyone else has. And then the solution that it offered and elicited an emotional response. And so (laughs) check this, guys. The the, the problem is that we got a barking dog. The solution was how to stop your dog from barking without, you know, disciplining, without treats, without dog trainers, without no words used at all. And your body language. Wow. Okay. (laughs) And so you can see how that would elicit an emotional response. Okay. So if your messages are not doing that to the marketplace, then A, you're either talking to the wrong person in the marketplace. So you have the problem, you have a solution, but you're talking to the wrong person. Okay. Or you're talking to the right person, but the way that you're presenting your solution isn't eliciting an emotional response. All right. And so... Those are the things that you must have in order before you can actually, you know, launch a program and, 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 to, and to make sure that it actually touches the person that you need to touch. OK. And then how do you actually take the program once you found your market, you understand it's matching. And that's what we did. We zipped all of our programs up. We created a three step process. And that three step process, we created three different programs. Right. So we got the overall program and be business. OK, and then we got three different products. I can't reveal those products on it on a episode today because they're not completely finalized. And well, they're finalized and, and everything, but we're still going through the making sure that all the documents and everything is still intact and in place. And so you got your you, you, you break your product down, your process down so that when you deliver it. So the marketplace is going to elicit that emotional response because they can clearly see the step by step. They can see each step and understand which mile, which milestone they'll hit. So this is how you really make it that clear statement. OK. And now when you have those two things in order. Right. You got your beta program finished. You understand the marketplace that you're talking to. So you got your launch three step process in order and everything that you're going to give your 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 uh, your clients and the solution that you're going to bring to the table. And it's all validated. OK. The next thing that you're going to need is to understand the value ladder. Okay? Understand the value ladder. Right? Grab your pens. Cut off distractions because this is going to really, really ruffle some feathers here. There are two types of value that you bring to the table. 
and there's only one type of value that's nine times out of ten taught in all of these products and, and courses that we actually become a part of, okay? And that value is called personal value. So you, 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 you're, we're always raising our personal value level, right? And in the land of marketing and sales, the land of passive income, the land of business as a whole, the, 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 the value level that we're normally raising is the tactic value level. So you're going to try to take whatever messages and whatever products and whatever solutions you're selling, you're going to try to take those out there with a tactic. So you try Facebook advertisers, right? And you try a strategy. So I'm going to say your personal value level level consists of strategy and tactics. So you take your Facebook, right, Um, ad course, Right, <laughs> you say, okay, cool. I can give my challenge out, my five day challenge out of my feet because I took an ad course. I can send the challenge, and people are going to come in. I'm going to get a flood of clients buying from me all the time. And now that can work, and you can make a bunch of cash flow. But can you see how your marketing message can kind of deter that from happening? All right, you say, okay, great, great. I want to create lives and I want to go to TikTok, or I want to create lives and I want to put them on YouTube, right? Or I want to do Facebook lives, right? I want to create PDFs and sell them on eBay, okay? And regardless of the strategy and the tactic you use, you're only dealing in your personal value level. And so, which means that when you stop, it stops. When you stop working, your income stops coming in. And I challenge anyone to challenge me on that, right? If you stop working right now, does your income stop? And I'm talking about for years, for five years in a row. I haven't worked or sold anything online for the last five years. But sudden, for some reason, the income keeps growing. Why is that? Because I have the right automations, processes, systems, and cash flow. You know, the cash flow systems, and more importantly, those things are in place. Okay, those are the most important things. And so, how do we get those in place? How do we, if we stop, our income keep going? Because there's another level of value that you need to learn that you never even thought about. And that's the corporate value letter, right? So there's corporate value letters in place. So if you think about this for a second, right? I'm going to break this down into frameworks, all right? So if you take a Facebook ad and run it to a challenge campaign, that's called a framework. You're running an ad to a challenge. And if people come and take your 30-day challenge to lose 30 pounds in 30 days, you can make some money, right? So that's a framework, but that's on the personal level, the personal value level framework. Okay, how do you turn that into a corporate level framework? Well, let's say like if you systematize that process, okay, that 30 day, you systematize it to where you're not talking to anyone. No one has to reach out to you. No one has to come in contact with you, but it still does everything as if you was talking to them. You can systematize that process, right? Then you can use what's called a three-step campaign. Like we're coming to the marketplace with a three-step campaign. That's the strategy that corporate uses, right? And and we're using um, inside that three-step campaign the free preview seminar. That's another strategy that's used in corporate, right? And so if you come to the marketplace with a strategy, with a tactic of corporate, right? So the free preview seminar, if you think Tony Robbins, you think um, Dean Graziosi, you think you know, people actually, you, you see it on TV, real estate, you see it on TV and real estate all the time. Hey, come down to, you know, the Hilton Hotel downtown and we're going to be showing you guys how to flip property, right? It's all free. Just show up and you go down there and someone's presenting on a stage and after, this, after they finish talking about the free preview, it could be one day, it could be three days. After they finish teaching you what they're going to teach you up front. Right. Then they sell you a big program, a ten thousand dollar program or something on the back end of that. Right. Well, you know, that's a corporate structure. Like so a lot of companies do that situation in different types of environments because it's a framework that corporate uses. OK. And so there's a bunch of just like there's tactics and strategy on the personal level side. There's a bunch of corporate level frameworks on the corporate level side so that you don't have to work so hard as an entrepreneur. So that when you put one of these frameworks in place, when you stop, it don't stop. All right. To give you that, an, a practical example of that, let's take the let's take a, a personal value level. Um, let's let's take a personal value tactic, and we're going to try to use that tactic in a corporate structure. 
So, and I'm going to use a very simple, simple um, example because many of us have already been in the, inside the network marketing industry. So if you take a network marketer, someone who sells products and services and try to get distributors in their downline and things like that, or affiliate programs, it doesn't matter. You take someone like that and they then create a process that allows them to recruit like crazy, <laughs> okay? Recruit massive people into his downline. He's growing a downline so big and everybody in, in his company. Wow, wow, one, right? What are you doing? How did you do all of these things? And so when he grew that downline that big, right? Obviously he has a strategy that's working, a system that he put in place. Can you take that same system which he created from his personal value, right? He, he, he understands how to do some things based on what he learned. And he put a system in place that allowed him to auto recruit his downline. So if you take that same auto recruiting downline system, and let's just say that you put that into a subway franchise, that same system you put into a subway franchise. Well, will that recruiting system allow you to sell sandwiches from at Subway so that your company grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and keep growing? No, it doesn't. But if you take the corporate framework that a subway uses, then you can apply that same framework to Subway, create thousand brands like they are all, all, all around the country to a McDonald's, to a Burger King, to a Starbucks. Right. And that framework, you can see how that would be the complete opposite of how your personal value works when you put up your personal value framework. If you work, I mean, if you stop working, it stop in a corporate level. If you stop working, it don't stop. Right. And an example of that is that when the managers come home from Walmart, do they go home saying, man, I hope Walmart sells some products this this week so that we can all get paid? No, because the corporate framework that Walmart uses automatically makes sure that the money keep coming in, regardless of how many employees stop working. Does this make sense, guys? OK. And so what we're teaching inside the NBL business system is corporate frameworks that you can use on your passive income systems. That allows you to start your income once you build it, but when you stop, it don't stop. That's called a cumulative cash flow, right? That you can keep going, that keeps growing without your involvement, right? A cumulative cash flow that keeps growing without your involvement. Does this make sense? All right. So those are the three things that you need whenever you're bringing a launch to place. The next thing will be your price point. Make sure that your price point is anywhere between two and ten thousand dollars. Okay, so if you're talking to the right audience, you, which means your market to message matches exactly what your program provides. Okay, so you got that in order. The second thing is that you understand the level of sophistication in the marketplace that you're talking to. Okay, you understand those, those different levels so that you can elicit an emotional response based on what you're out there talking to the marketplace about. Okay, the next thing that you need in place is... Your frameworks, okay, and everything else is just a given, but you need your frameworks in place, all right, and that means your corporate level frameworks. How do you actually going to present this to the marketplace, right? And I'm sorry, I missed one. And do you have your systems and processes built in such a way that makes you that doesn't involve you, okay? So when you get these four things in place, I promise you can launch anything in the world that you want to launch and see the results flow in, okay. So if you're thinking about joining the NBL business program, I know through the first four, you know, through the first season and these last four prelude episodes, we've been talking extensively about how to build a company from scratch and take it into profit. We've been touching on business credit and how to turn business credit into passive income. And now we're going into our second cycle, which is the cash flow cycle, which is the start of our next class on August the 15th. If you go to nblbusiness.com, you can put your name on an email list over there. OK, we only accept 50 students into the extensive program. Right. And so when you put your name and your email on the list, you guys are going to be the first to know about it when we actually open these doors up. But in hindsight, there's three cycles of cash flow that we're going to be building out. We're going to be building out level one. I mean, I'm sorry, cycle one cash flow. That's four tiers of business credit and fundability. How to grow your business credit to $100,000 in sustainable cash flow and revenue. Okay, cycle two, the cash flow cycle. How to activate four streams of congruent income simultaneously at the same time. First stream being passive income. That's why we're talking about extensively on this episode. 
The next stream is your residual income. So when you do something once, you got to make sure that money keep coming in, come, come, keep coming in, keep coming in without your involvement so that you can keep growing that accumulative cash flow. Step three or the level three is your leverage cash flow. That's leverage income, which means you get paid from other people working for you. All right. And then step four is funding. Right. Unlimited funding without denial, without collateral, without checking your Social Security number. So that's cycle one. We call it the power cycle because you put all your credentials in place so that you can execute cycle two. We call it the cash flow cycle so that you can execute it flawlessly without failing. OK. And then cycle three, this is our financial stability cycle where we teach you how to take all this accumulative cash flow that you just made and how, what type of properties that you want to invest in or assets properties, <laughs> what type of assets that you want to invest in that keeps doubling that cash flow, doubling that cash flow without your involvement, without you even thinking about it. OK. And that's how you wake up with a lot of money. And now you have the ability to not be anxious in that subject anymore. Work how you please. Do what you like and fulfill the happiness that your family need. Does that make sense, guys? All right. So if this is your first time listening to us, thank you. I really appreciate you listening to this episode. If this is your 15th time listening to us, I don't understand why you haven't came into the NBL business um, program, because this is going to help you guys, you know, keep growing cash flow until you can't do it any longer. All right. So thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate your time. That's my time, guys. And I'll see you all on the next episode. If you want to work with me, look at the uh, description. We have an email. You can just send us an email, follow the instructions that you see there. And then we're giving a free giveaway away. Um, and that giveaway is the four tiers of fundability plan. How do you go from no business credit at all to having one hundred thousand dollars in, in business credit, you know, that you can use forever, <laughs> whatever you want without using your social, without checking collateral. OK. And uh, and without selling anything. Makes sense? All right, so send us an email. You'll get that document. You'll also be put on the list for the launch. And I'll see you guys on the inside. Peace. Mm-hmm.